Just like in life, boating has its ups and its downs, and you never quite know how things are going to turn out, just like some of the things we'll see in this week's episode of Boating News of the Week. Hockey and sailor jackknifed and gold. Traffic is being backed up. Our first story to make the boating news this week is going to take us over to the coast of Vietnam, where this was the scene this past week when the 261-foot general cargo vessel Hoyong Gia 46 was traveling up the Vietnamese coast carrying a load of 2,700 tons of rice when the vessel encountered a massive storm, causing the vessel to veer off track and eventually wind up beaching itself, also puncturing the hull, causing the vessel to lose power and to become stranded as seen here. The crew of 11 had no choice but to go ahead and put on life jackets and jump into the surf and try and make a break for the beach as the vessel was taking a pounding in the shore break. Fortunately, the locals actually saw this incident occur and quickly jumped into action, many of them swimming out into the surf trying to assist the crew back onto the beach. The Vietnamese border guard also did assist in this rescue effort. They did give a report after the fact claiming that all 11 crew members did safely make it to the beach thanks to the help of the locals. Our next story to make the boating news this week is going to bring us back stateside and take us down to Louisiana, where this was the wild scene just this past week, when a 20-foot recreational fishing vessel went offshore with two people on board to enjoy a day of fishing, when all of a sudden, things turned quickly. The Coast Guard received a distress call around 8 a.m. from a 20-foot fishing vessel claiming they were taking on water after the vessel lost its motor. U.S. Coast Guard sector Mobile watchstanders coordinated the effort, as well as Gulfport and New Orleans. Gulfport launched a 45-foot response boat to the scene, and Air Station New Orleans launched a Jayhawk helicopter to assist. Once the Coast Guard crews arrived on the scene, they were able to successfully pull the two crew members off of this vessel and onto the Coast Guard response boat. Nobody was injured during the incident, but man, this is a wild scene. I just can't imagine being trapped offshore, just completely missing the engine. We do everything we can when we're heading offshore to make sure our vessel's in tip shot shape, but honestly, I don't think I've ever checked a transom bolt or inspected a transom before going offshore in my life. May have to add that to my checklist going forward. Our next story to make the boating news this week is going to be one we actually touched on probably two weeks ago, but the Coast Guard actually came out and made some comments about it this week, so we figured we'd bring it back up briefly. But that's going to be the extreme issue the Coast Guard's having with the number of migrants who are trying to cross the ocean to come into the United States. Now, of course, illegal migration is nothing new, but just the way it's going about right now is something that has the Coast Guard concerned. Chief Warrant Officer Matthew James was quoted as saying these individuals are ignoring the real risks of travel like this. Just about every vessel we encounter in these voyages were constructed haphazardly with improvised materials and were taking on water. The few vessels that appeared to be well built were dangerously overloaded and capsizing was imminent when we arrived on the scene. A great example of this is the typical 40 to 50 foot Haitian sail freighter that has been intercepted by the Coast Guard over the last year has had an average of anywhere from 100 150 to 300 people on board these vessels. A typical safe sailboat of that size can only hold about 30. Captain Robert Kinsley was quoted as saying, as Haiti's overall situation continues to erode, our crews have witnessed an alarming uptick in maritime migration. Of course, we see spikes in this dangerous activity following natural disasters and social economical events, but the big problem we have is these vessels are shockingly overloaded. When you see it firsthand, it's almost unbelievable. The Coast Guard again is encouraging people, if you have family or relatives who are considering doing a voyage like this, do everything in your power to talk them out of it. Our next story to make the boating news this week is going to take us over to Japan, where Japanese officials announced a little over a week ago that they plan to start releasing more than 1 million tons of water that was used to cool nuclear reactors at the Fukushima nuclear power plant back into the ocean, raising major concern among fishermen and local boaters in the area. After the tsunami that crippled the power plant back in 2011, local officials have used rainwater, seawater, and other local water sources to cool the reactor to prevent a meltdown, and the water has been stored in these containers seen in the images here. Now, Japanese officials are saying that this is no longer a viable option to continue to do. It takes up too much space and also poses environmental risks, as if one of the containers was to leak, obviously radioactive material will be released back into the area. So the plan is for Japan to try and decontaminate the water and slowly release it back out into the Pacific Ocean. Now, I'm not a nuclear scientist. Most of you guys know that. 
but this just doesn't sound right to me. It sounds like too much could go wrong for this to actually be let to happen. But let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on this. Do you think this is something Japan can successfully pull off with no long-term ramifications? Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Boating News of the Week. You ever see anything crazy happening out on your waterways? Be sure to hit me up on Facebook or Instagram and let me know, and you might see your stories over here. And if you haven't already, go ahead and drop an anchor on the subscribe button here.